Hi, class. Welcome to topic six homework. Let's talk about quartiles. So for this assignment, I'm going to be looking at number nine as my reference, and I'm going to go over two different examples. One example, I will have an even number of data points in my set. So I'll have 12 UF city, US cities. In my second example, I will have an odd number of data points in my set. So I'll have 13. So two different examples so we can kind of see how this works. Um, they will follow the same process, but the way of finding the median, um, it is just slightly different. Um, so we'll make sure we go over both of those examples. Okay, so when you're finding the quartiles, what you're doing is you are dividing the court, you're dividing your data up into different sections. So then you can exa examine it based on the different sections. And this kind of helps you see how your data is lining up between, um, is it evenly distributing between the upper half and the lower half? Is it um, getting skewed towards one half more than the other? It kind of helps you look at things like that. And it really does just help you divide up your data and look at different sections of your data. Um, quartiles are very important if you ever do a box and whisker plot that's what you'll use to build that box and whisker plot you'll use your quartiles okay so when you're finding the quartiles you'll be given a data set so you'll be given your numbers here we are looking at high temperatures in 12 u.s cities so we have these list of temperatures we have them listed from least to greatest if they're not listed in order that's the very first step you should do on these problems is list your data from least to greatest. All right, so we want to find the five number summary and the interquartile range for our data set. Okay, so for our five number summary, we need to find the minimum, lower quartile, median, upper quartile, maximum, and then that interquartile range. When we work through this five number summary, do not work in order. So don't work down the list. We're going to work out of order. You want to find the min and the max first, then find your median, and then work on your quartiles. Okay, so since our data is listed in order, we can go ahead and pull out those mins and maxes. Minimum is going to be the lowest number we have. Maximum will be the highest number. So we go to look at the ends. So the 49 would represent our min, and then our maximum would be over here at the 80. Okay, so we found our mins and maxes. Now let's go ahead and find that median. When we find the first median, we are going to follow the same process you would follow with finding any median in your data set. So you order it from least to greatest, you find the data point in the middle. If you have two points that are right by the middle, you find the average of those two points. So the way I do this is I will cross off numbers from the outside until I get to the middle, and then that's how I find my median. So I start chipping off my numbers. I want to make sure I chip off the same number from each side. And then so once I get here, I'm in the middle. I'm looking like it's going to be between 58 and 64. I want to go ahead and double check that I crossed out the same amount of numbers on each side. So I have one, two, three, four, five numbers crossed off. One, two, three, four, five numbers crossed off. So we're good to go there. So what this is saying here is we found our median. It is in between 58 and 64. So our medians here, and the way we're going to find it is we're going to average that 58 and 64. All right, so when we find that average, we'll take 58 plus 64 divided by 2. Take those two numbers sitting in the middle there, add them first, divide by 2. Make sure you do your order of operations, add together, then divide by 2. So 58 plus 64 divided by 2, that gives you 61. 61 is in between 58 and 64. That is good. We always need that. It is perfectly in between those two numbers. It is in between our min and our max. It is not always going to be perfectly in between our min and our max. So keep that in mind. Um, it will divide the 58 and 64 evenly in half find the number exactly in the middle of those two, but it won't always find the number exactly in the middle of 49 and 80. Just keep that in mind. All right, so our median is 61. 61 is between 49 and 80, so we are good there. Okay, so what we've done now is we found our min or max, we found our median. With finding this median, we had divided our set into two pieces. We have this piece to the left, 
this piece to the left is where we're going to find the lower quartile. And then the piece to the right is where we're going to find the upper quartile. So when we do this step, I'm going to go ahead and erase all my slashes so I can look at my data again. OK, so now we have the median. We have it divided in half. To find the lower quartile, we're going to find the median of everything on that one lower half. So we're going to find the median from 49 to 58. The upper quartile is going to be the median from 64 to 80. So this is where you're finding two more medians, but you're dividing your data in half and finding the median of each half of your data. So we'll go through the same process of finding the median, whatever process you like to do that. Again, I chip away the numbers. I find 51 and 51 are in the middle together. So I'm going to take the average of 51 and 51. So we do 51 plus 51 over 2. That's going to give me 51 again. So my lower quartile is 51. So my lower quartile is going to break there. And then I do the same thing for the upper half. So now I'm finding the median from 64 to 80. So I'll start chipping away at the data. I get to those two numbers in the middle again. And again, I'll find those average. So I'll add the 73s together and then divide that number by two. And that should give you 73. So then our upper quartile is 73. So it's sitting there. So there we have our quartiles. One, two, three, four. There are four quartiles. And then the last thing you want to do is you want to find that inner quartile range. The inner quartile range, you want to make sure you do this after you have found the lower and upper quartile. The range, you are finding the difference between that lower and upper quartile. That's how you find that inner quartile range. So it's similar to how you would find the range of a data set. Um, instead of taking the difference between the min and the max, we'll take the difference between the upper quartile and the lower quartile. So we'll take that 73 minus 51. That gives us 22. So our interquartile range would be 22. So your five number summary for this set of data would have a min of 49, lower quartile 51, median of 61, upper quartile 73, maximum 80, and then we have that inner quartile range of 22. All right, so now let's go through and let's do an example where we have an odd number of data points in our set. When we have an odd number, we're going to follow the same process. The really the big difference we're going to notice here is that when we find our median, it's not going to be between two different numbers. It's going to be one number when we find that median. So we'll see that as we go through this example. Okay, so this time we have the following are ages of 13 music teachers. So this 13, this is what I'm talking about. We have an odd number of data points in our data set. There are 13 numbers here. Um, they are, again, ordered from least to greatest, so that's good. Again, if they aren't ordered, you want to order them. And then we want to find the five-number summary. So we're doing the same idea again. Okay, so it is in order, so we're going to look to the left, find that max. Look all the way over to the end. Ooh, find the min on the left. I apologize. The min is the 28. Max is the 54. So all the way to the left, find that 28. That's your min. All the way to 54, find your max. OK, so now let's find that median. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to start chipping away in numbers on the outside until I get to the middle. All right, so this time, when I get to the middle, I get to one single number, 44, instead of two numbers. So let me go ahead and double check that I crossed out the same amount of numbers on each side. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So good, I crossed out six numbers on either side. So this 44 is my median. Since I only got one number, which is what will happen when you have that odd number of data, data points in your set, um, you're going to get that one number as your median, and you don't have to worry about taking that average this time. So our median, we can go ahead and directly copy it down. It's that 44. We don't have to worry about taking the average. 
Okay, so let me erase my tick marks so we can look at this data set a little more clearly. Okay, 44 is now the middle of our data set. So now we have broken it in half. We're breaking it in half above the 44 now. So when we do the upper quartile and the lower quartile, we are not going to be including 44 when we find the medians. So when we chip away at the numbers, 44 is going to stay in the middle. We're going to kind of ignore it. So when I go to find the lower quartile, let me change my color. So when I do the lower quartile, I'm going to start by chipping away the 28 and the 41. Notice I don't go to the 44. I start with the 41 this time. So this is where the biggest difference you'll see between an even and odd number is, is you don't include that 44 when you're looking to chip away to find the inner quartile medians. All right, then the 32, 39, and then we get to 32, 38 in the middle here. All right, so then here we did get the two numbers. So just like before on the previous problem, we are getting those two numbers again. So we're gonna go ahead and have to add them together and divide by two. So we'll take 32 plus 38, divide by two, and that is going to give us 35. 35 is exactly in the middle of 32 and 38. That is building our lower quartile. So our lower quartile is gonna break in between that 32, 38. And then let's do the upper quartile now. All right, so on this one, again, I'm gonna chip away the 54. The 45, I'm ignoring the 44. It is my median, so I'm ignoring it this time. Chip away the 53, 49, and then now I get to two 50s in the middle. So just like before, when we've done those inner quartiles, we'll add those two 50s together, divide by two, and get 50 again. So then here is the break for that quartile. So then here we have those four quartiles. Notice how they each have three numbers. And then we have that 44, which is like our odd man out in the middle. So 44 sitting in the middle. Besides 44, we have three numbers in each of our quartiles. And then the final answer, the interquartile range, just like before, we're going to find the difference between that lower quartile, the upper quartile. You will take the upper quartile minus the lower quartile, 50 minus 35. And that gives us 15. OK, so when you're working through these problems, make sure you know whether or not you have an even number of data points, odd number of data points in your set, and make sure you can approach that appropriately. When you have an odd number like this one, when you get that median where it's one number, that 44, then remember that 44 is going to sit in your median. It's going to kind of be like the odd man out, and you're going to work outside of it. If you have an even number of data points, like our first example here, I got between 58 and 64, my median sitting in between those. So my medians in between 58 and 64. So 58 and 64 are getting broken apart into those quartiles. So I do include them when I find the medians of those quartiles, okay? So keep that in mind. When you find the average of the two numbers for the median, you break it apart in the middle, and then you still use those 58 and 64 to find your other, the interquartiles, medians. When it's one single number is the median, like that 44, 44 is crossed out. It's like your odd man out. 44 is breaking the data in half, and then you're not going to use 44 when you find your interquartile medians. All right, guys, I hope this helps. Let me know if you guys have any more questions and let me know if you need an example of the quartiles with uh, addition to another problem.